from the campus of Arkansas State University, this is Centennial Reflections. The Centennial Moment series explores ASU history from its start as an agricultural district school to the multifaceted university it is today. Hello, I'm Rich Carvel, host for this series, and our guest today is Charles Raspberry, former chair of the Department of Radio TV, an Arkansas State grad, uh, native of, uh, of Paragool. Um, Charles the radio TV department at Arkansas State University uh, is one of the most well respected in the state and the, and the Mid-South of the nation. How did this all get started? Well Rich, uh, you, you really have to credit Dr. Carl Ring who uh, I think was a real visionary and uh, he, he sensed, and of course Dr. Ring was the president back in the 50s, and he sensed there was a need to be able to promote Arkansas State, not only in this region, but around the state of Arkansas. And one of the best ways to do it would be to have its own radio station. But Dr. Ring was um, a shrewd man who understood how the political situation worked, and he knew that uh, it would be even better if in addition to having a radio station, we could use that radio station to, to prepare students for careers in broadcasting, especially broadcast journalism, because we already had a fine journalism program at Arkansas State. So the two just seemed to go together. We could uh, teach journal, uh, broadcast journalism, broadcasting courses, and at the same time operate a radio station to get our message out around this area and around the state. Well, to have a radio station, you had to have a transmitter. And we've got a photograph of that uh, <laughs> early transmitter, which was affectionately named. Well, the students called her Grace, called Grace. her Grace, <laughs> yes. I, don't ask me why, but uh, <laughs> they did. And in, that, in this picture, uh, you see uh, uh, some of the folks who were involved in, in getting KESU on the air. That's Dr. Carl Ring on the left, and standing next to Dr. Ring is Tex Plunkett, who was head of the journalism department. Uh, on the far side, Dr. O.F. White, who was head of the, I uh, may have been called the languages and literature department, we simply referred to it English. as the English department, uh -huh. and journalism was a part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, then next to Dr. White was Dr. N.D. Hazelbaker, who was the academic dean mm -hmm. at that time, and then uh, the gentleman on the far right, I believe, is uh, Mr. Roland Hughes, who was a member of the Board of Trustees uh, at that time. Now, not shown in this picture, but an integral part of the early part of this program was John Crane. Absolutely, and I've often wondered if John took that picture. I'm he not sure have. who took mm -hmm. the picture, but John needed to be in that picture because uh, Dr. Ring and Dr. White brought John Kramer in to uh, teach speech, mm -hmm. which was also under the English department and also then to uh, teach some courses in radio. One of those courses was radio announcer, announcing, the first course, and I was in that course. Uh, but John and because I became- you were a student here. I was a right. student here. Right. I was already working in radio at the time at, at, while a student uh, up at Paragool at KDRS, uh -huh. but John and I became lifelong friends. He was just a super great guy, and he filed the application for KASU. KASU. But back in 1957, it was Arkansas State College. <laughs> yes. Who had the vision the, that it was going to be a university? There's an interesting story about that, and I, I, it's been told many times, and I'm sure many, many people know it, but we originally asked for KASC because, as you point out, we were Arkansas State College. So we originally asked for, uh, for ASC, but Arizona State College already had those call letters. So we were told to select something else by the FCC. And we did select something else. 
and that was KASU. And I like to think that there were visionaries then who saw that coming. <laughs> and interestingly enough, in 1958, Arizona State got a bill through its legislature that changed the name of Arizona State to Arizona State University. And they wrote and asked us, uh, they said, we know you were interested in KASC. Would you give that, those call letters up so that we could have those now that we're uh, a university so that we could have KASU because that's what we'd asked for when we couldn't get KASC. And we said, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> and that turned out to be a very wise decision. <laughs> Uh, another picture that, uh, that we want to look at features uh, uh, a great piece of equipment, a portable recorder, because it had a strap on it and you could carry it around with you. And uh, how did that thing operate? And who are these guys in this well, picture? Well, uh, uh, this is Cletus Stanfield, a, a student back in the uh, late 50s, I believe. Mm -hmm and he's interviewing Dr. White, who the head of the English department. And I'm not certain since I'm not looking at the other side of that, but I believe that was a wire recorder. And when I came to Arkansas State, back to ASU uh, as a member of the faculty in, in 1961, I found that wire recorder. It was still available. Now, I don't know whether it was still working then because we had moved to tape by that time. But you know, students have always been an integral part of the, uh, of the program here at ASU in broadcasting and operating the stations, radio, and then later television, of course. And Cleet went on to be a renowned broadcaster in the boot heel of Missouri. He did. He had, a, had a, a very successful career as the manager of KCRV in Carothersville, Missouri, and became an integral part of that community and is, well, is remembered over there fondly even today. Now, one of the other things uh, that the Department uh, of Radio TV operated uh, during many of those years, uh, we'll talk about in just a minute, and that's the Indian Sports Network, which broadcasts football and basketball games. And we'll talk about that when we come back. <laughs> 